I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. Just click on the link in the description below or go to my website, AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. Hi there, I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about your ex never stops thinking about you. Okay. So, this is a question that comes up all the time. Absolutely. And it's one of everybody's biggest fears. Yes. Will my ex forget about me? If I go no contact, will they forget about me? Will they move on? Are they done? Will I never hear from them again? It's scary. And how long do I have before all of this happens? Absolutely. Yeah. That's a good question right there, Margaret, that everybody's wondering. How long do I have? Right. Can I really keep this up <laughs> for four months, five months, six months? Where You're telling me no contact and, and, and I don't know if they'll forget me in a month or two months or what am I going to do? And you and I have had a lot of talks about this, but the bottom line is if you love somebody or you ever loved them or yes. you were ever attached to them, yes. you never forget about that no, person. No, you don't. And even though, you know, they might be tucked away as a pleasant memory, but you don't ever forget about them. If you've loved somebody and shared lots of stuff with them, no, they're never gone. Absolutely. Right. And, and it's really, really important for you guys to understand that, I mean, if you really took a moment and closed your eyes, you could imagine your ex's voice, right? Like, if I sit here right now and just think about my ex with the Applebee's you know, that I talk about, I could hear her voice. Sure. Almost immediately I could call right. up her voice and imagine what she might say to me, how, what she might ask me, you know, all kinds yeah. of things because I knew her personality. The, the, one of the girls that I broke up that I was talking about briefly in the other video, I could hear her voice and it's been seven years. Right. You know, I can think of a girl that I dated 15 years ago right now and hear her voice. Like, mm -hmm. like it comes up to me, right. no problem. You don't forget people that you were attached to. It's just not the way we're wired. No, it's not. Okay? So take comfort in knowing that even if you have not talked to your ex in months, they haven't stopped thinking about you. It could be a shirt that, that you gave them and they put it on and they think about you and for a minute. And they think about you, right. Or a TV show comes on that you used to watch together. Or they drive by a place you used to go together. Or something that you like comes up uh, and they see it. Like there's a movie that, oh, he used to like movies like that and they think about you. Or they'd be shopping and see something, well, she'd really like that or he'd really like that. You don't forget about people that you love. No. It just doesn't happen, right? Yes. Even in the movie Fifty First Dates, which crazy enough, Margaret, I didn't tell you this, but I had somebody that I worked with recently that was dating somebody with the same thing. Oh my. With the same illness where you kept forgetting people. Yeah. Did you ever see the old movie? No. There was a movie called Fifty First Dates, came out years ago with Adam Sandler, uh -huh. where Drew Barrymore, she kept forgetting things at the end of the date. So by the end of like the 50th date, every date was like a first date for her. It was her. an only date. She so remembered get... him or she, she started to remember him. How sad. But I actually literally did a Skype with somebody recently who was dating somebody going through that. So he didn't remember at the end of the day? No, she didn't, re she didn't, she didn't remember, remember the him. The but the ironic thing is, she, and there's we talked about trauma in another video. Yes. Um, she would remember him but she would forget things that her family did and said. So there was something about the bond with him that she remembered him. She wouldn't forget oh him, my. but yeah. she would she forget her parents yeah. and things like that. Yeah. And I, I think that there was a lot of trauma There's going on there. There's trauma with that. But he, yeah, he was kind of a lifeline then. Yes. Yeah. But I can't get into that situation. It's very specific. But right. the point is this. Yeah. Even somebody that had a major trauma to their brain and, and whatever the medical condition is, I can't remember off the top of my head, they still remembered somebody. Somebody, yes. And when they're having severe issues like that. So no. If you've loved somebody, that's about the most powerful bond there is. Absolutely. Yeah. So your ex never stops thinking about you. They just don't. They, they may not 
think that they can work it out with you. There's no guarantees for that. But it's not going to be because they've stopped thinking about you or forgotten put them you. Up, put you out of their mind. Yeah, Absolutely. Totally. No, you filed somewhere at least. Uh, I think I brought up recently that I had a guy have an ex come back from four years ago. And he's yes. now dating her again. Yeah. Right? He never thought she was going to come back. Now, he wasn't waiting all that time. In fact, we were working together and talking about a, a different breakup. But... The ex from four years ago has come back into his life. She wants to work it out. She's trying hard to get yeah. him back. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about an email uh, that I got from somebody recently that was shocked to hear from an ex. And Margaret's also going to talk a little bit about our ability as human beings to remember people that we love and what that means and why it happens, right? Yeah. There's a term for it that we call holding the object. Right. Okay? Yeah. So we're going to talk about that, but let me start with the email here. This is a good one. They said, hey coach, long time, no talk. Anyways, this is a success email. One, I never thought I'd write in a million years. Okay. LOL. Just a recap, my ex and I broke up during the summer and I did everything wrong. Long written letter, grand gesture, blowing up her phone, you name it, I did it. On top of that, we were in a long distance relationship for the final year of our three year relationship. I was a wreck and could honestly say that that was the one lowest point of my life. Sure. I lost almost 15 pounds due to not eating, slept almost two to three hours a night, and would literally pace around the apartment just to calm myself down. Oh my. It was a few days later when I stumbled upon your videos and I can honestly say that your videos were the beacon during my darkest days. Oh, how nice. I immediately signed up for your email coaching and it helped me out so much. I actually still look at it whenever I have self-doubts about myself and my situation. How wonderful. I learned how to work on myself and I can honestly say that I'm a better version. Since the breakup, I've lost a ton of weight. I've been on the Dean's List twice. I've read self-improvement books and strengthened my relationships with friends and family. I accepted the breakup and used it as my fuel to not only be the best version of me, but to also move on with my life. Right. Good for him. Fast forward to eight months later. Guess who shoots me a text out of the blue? Yep, my ex. And boy, were you right. When you said that they would reach out when you least expect it. I had to take a double take to make sure that my mind wasn't playing with me. Right. She said that she's been thinking of me lately and to give me a call whenever I was free. Mm -hmm. Of course, I didn't respond right away. I made her wait hours until I called her. One hour for each month that she made me wait. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> oh, that's funny. We talked for about two and a half hours. It was so good to hear her voice, and I could tell that she was smiling on the other end. Mm -hmm. We basically caught up and picked up where we left off, like nothing happened. I made her laugh with my corny jokes effortlessly, and what did I just say? It was effortless, <laughs> Eff whatever you said. It wasn't so effortless when I said it. And I could tell she missed me. When I asked her what she has been thinking of, she said me, and that she's never stopped thinking about me. Next time you wonder, remember this. Eight months. Mm -hmm. Eight months. Never stopped thinking about me. She said that she wanted to reach out sooner, but she wanted to work on herself as well before she wanted to break no contact. She said that she forgave me for my shortcomings and said that she could have done more to help after realizing that she did a lot of things that factored into our relationship ending. Two grown-ups. How wonderful. They did. They both did tremendous amount yes, of work. Yes, they did. 
I told her that it takes two and that I apologized for my behavior as well, which was due to my anxious attachment style. She said, if I learned from mistakes, almost hinting like she wanted to give us a second chance. I said, I literally have pages of everything I learned, which of course came from your videos. Oh, how nice. We ended the conversation and have been texting back and forth since. I'm doing my best to give her space so I don't mess up smothering her and scaring her off. I plan on, um, pl I plan on arranging a meetup with her soon, but I don't want to get my hopes up too high. Like you said, women's feelings change like the clouds in the sky. Either way, I know deep down I'll be fine if it works out or not. And that's the stance you need to take. And that's because you taught me a lot. I'll be graduating from college in less than seven months, which means I'm making big bucks. And most importantly, I have the knowledge and confidence to move forward. I know my worth, and if my ex fails to see that, that's okay. I can't thank you enough for all your videos, which I have religiously watch every day. For anyone that is doubting themselves and their situation, keep watching the videos, work on yourselves, and always keep a positive attitude. Take it from a guy who made every mistake in the book, who was in a long distance relationship with his ex and said they would never talk again. Wow. It's funny where life takes you, just remember to keep laughing and smiling through all the BS. Coach Craig, I know the Super Bowl just ended, but you are the true MVP, <laughs> a.k.a. most valuable psychotherapist. <laughs> I look forward to more videos soon. Wishing you nothing but peace, love, and success from Brian. Well, bless Brian. That's an amazing story, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. And he acted like a grown-up, and it sounds like she did, too. He's worked incredibly hard yes, on himself. absolutely. And even this, even though absolutely. the breakup was eight months ago, yes. he still stayed on the channel. Yes, he I did. I cannot tell you guys how disappointed you're going to be if you don't stick to this. Right. Uh, I talked to somebody this week who literally, and I, I asked him to please write me an email about his situation, because he literally was crying on the on the Skypes with me numerous times, thought his ex would never come back, never come back, never come back. She started dating another guy. Guess what? She came back and she hung out with him just recently mm -hmm. and they wound up messing around and having mm -hmm. a good time together. Mm -hmm. So, and she's still not even over the guy she's dating. So she cheated on her current boyfriend with him. Uh-huh. But he really thought it was never going to happen. Yeah, and you don't. Yeah, you don't give up that easily. You know what he told me? What he said to me. He didn't know she was going to contact him because right. we had the Skype. Uh, what's today? Wednesday. Wednesday. So we we must have had it on Monday. Uh -huh. He 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 hadn't planned. He hadn't talked to her in a while, in months, in like a month, right? Right. And she hit him up on Friday. Mm -hmm. So he had scheduled the Skype with me beforehand. He said, I just wanted to cry on the Skype with you and talk about everything. <laughs> I had no idea that this was going to happen. Gonna happen right? And now we're already hanging out again. It was the crazy. And no. I said, people won't believe it. No. They just don't. They don't think no. No. that there's, I say there's a disturbance in the force. Yeah, there's a disturbance <laughs> in the force. There's no other way to put it or airwaves or something. Yeah, yeah. It, it's so true. Yeah. And so he's like so excited because... You know, I he might he is. might wind up getting back with her, but he's learning a lot because now he's thinking, I don't know if she's really going to be a good partner right. because now I thought she was such a sweet, innocent girl. She's cheating on her boyfriend with me yeah. and he thinks now that he sees things, she left him to be with the other guy. Yeah, with the other guy. So now he's starting to, well, I don't know well, if this is... Better after the breakup. Yeah, absolutely. Better after the breakup. I but remember that one, yes. It's incredible. Isn't it? How working on yourself is the most powerful thing you could do. And then he was at the ultimate point. Great if it works out, and if it doesn't, I'll be okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I was hoping you could talk a little bit about you know, everybody's concerned that their ex is going to forget about them. And, you know, we said up front, you don't forget about somebody you love. No. Can you explain about holding yes. the object? Yes, I can. Yeah. Um, if you read a great deal about 
human experience as a baby. And we do know now um, from people being psychoanalyzed and from people remembering their experiences much more what it's like to be a baby than we ever knew before. Um, and if we have an average expectable environment when we're babies, mm -hmm. we probably turn out reasonably okay. That's right. All right? But if it's not, if there's chaos in the family, if there are all kinds of social problems, people being evicted, people going in and out of jail, that can get badly disrupted. If you're handed from caretaker to caretaker, or if you're left in your crib too long with nobody coming by to see you, it can be very hard to learn to hold the object. Let's the start object being, being the person. Like your mother yes. or your father. Yeah, like your mother or your care or any consistent caretaker. Um, if you don't see that person often enough and your needs aren't met, you don't learn to hold the picture of that person and the other attributes of that person in your memory and in your head so that you can call them up to soothe yourself. And if, with the, if the truth is to be known, that the way most of us soothe ourselves, although we've long forgotten it, is by calling up our mother or some other consistently comforting character. And the problem is, if you've had a parent or caretaker that wasn't soothing right. and had a lot of anxiety, yes. that doesn't comfort you to picture them. Right. And when I think of some of the most distressed people I've ever worked with who find themselves acting out all of the time, doing crazy things, getting themselves in trouble with the law, getting themselves in trouble with their family and other contacts that they have, one of the things I've learned to ask is when you're distressed and you feel really bad, what do you do to make yourself feel better? Drink, act out, have sex, go to the bar, pick somebody up, and it's a whole series of things that probably temporarily make them feel better, but are ultimately self-destructive. Most people watch our videos. <laughs> Most people, well, if that would be a wonderful thing to do. If they these do, videos Margaret, I tell are you. working as a way of making people feel better, that would make both of us extremely happy. I cannot tell you how many people tell yeah. me every day they will literally sleep with our videos playing. Well, and that... That's I, we never go to bed wonderful. alone. No, I guess, well, I guess not. Um, Around the world. But that's just wonderful. And before we had enough technology for this, I can remember a particularly distressed woman. I knew she, was, she would act out, and then she would be suicidal, and then she would act out again. And finally, I, I did the, can you remember what your mother looks like? Can you remember what your husband looks like? She had married to a very nice man um, who could calm her down. And no, she really couldn't if she wasn't with them. Wow. So, out of desperation, I got her to get pictures of each of them. So, at all times, she had a picture of her mother, a picture of her husband, and she added a picture of me, and she wanted me to record something for her. So, I read her a brief passage, are you ready, from Winnie the Pooh, okay? So that when she was distressed, she could call up one of us. Mm -hmm. And after about a year, the mechanism, the normal mechanism began to kick in for her and she could call all of us up at various times when she needed to. Now that was an act of desperation on mm -hmm. my part, but I can assure you I did it again because it seemed to work. Um, the normal mechanism is to be able to remember and you hear a lot about self-soothing these days and that's what it means. What do we do when we feel anxious and bad and sad and terrible and crazy like we can't stand it without doing something? Mm -hmm. Um, that's when we need that soothing mechanism. The other thing that occurred to me subsequent to that is how many women I had worked with who would have more boyfriends over a year than was even imaginable. And I remember saying to one of them, um, how do you possibly get into another relationship when you haven't grieved the one before? She said, oh well, you know, when I end the relationship it's over. I don't even remember what they look like. Which gave me a clue that in order to grieve, you have to be able to call up the object. She said, she told me the theory. She said, once I break up with them, I don't even remember what they look like. So, um, it has... That's extreme, though. 
That's extreme, yeah. That's, that's a that's very, severe. very extreme and, case. And this might be the lady who married the gas man after knowing him for three weeks. Okay? <laughs> and she's not kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. I'm absolutely not kidding. Uh, several of us in the place where I worked had been involved with this family, and we all said, three weeks, and she marries the gas man. Uh, but her, her ability to relate and, and to hold the object, literally, was so poor, she couldn't grieve, so you might as well have this one as that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, But that is an extreme form, and I didn't treat her long enough to know if she would respond to some of those other things that we did. But this is wonderful that these videos are out there available 24-7 for anybody who needs them. That's Around just the world. wonderful. When I did my first one with the lady with the, the gas man, uh, we, it wasn't... We didn't have the technology that sure. we have now, so I had to relate to, you know, pictures and so forth. But this is just wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah. It is. And I cannot even tell you uh, how nice it, it is to hear when oh, people yes. say, I, I, I put your videos on and they play them through yeah. the night. Yeah. I had a girl tell me that today. And they calm me down. Yeah, I, I put it under my pillow. I put it by my pillow. Oh, I listen to you. I, yeah. If I wake up yeah. and you're playing, it comforts me. What? And I, you know, it's, I know. Uh, it's fantastic. How and wonderful, yeah. That's why I have a playlist that's called Listen While You Sleep. And so if you just <laughs> click on the playlist, and there's a lot, name? yeah, oh, there's a lot great. of videos in there, so oh. it'll play throughout the night, and by the morning time, it'll still be plenty should of videos. He, should I add Winnie the Pooh? <laughs> Maybe we should. <laughs> Margaret reads Winnie the Pooh. I read Winnie the Pooh, sure. <laughs> or anything else you order up. That's funny. Um, but to reiterate, your ex doesn't forget about oh, you. Oh, absolutely. Not if they're within the remote realm of healthy. Yeah, exactly. They don't stop thinking of you. No. And like I said, and I'm sure you, if you take a minute to do this, think about people you've dated. Even 10 years ago. Sure. You could call up their voice. Sure. You can call up their, their how they would say, I could do that right now. You could remember how they take their coffee. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, sure. you know, they're not going to forget about you. And so just because you don't hear from them for a while doesn't mean it's over. It doesn't mean that you can't work things out. It really doesn't. And one of the things you've often said, Craig, which I think is very helpful, is no one breaks up with somebody that they don't think it over and say, was that the right decision? Yes. I always really believe yes. that your ex will revisit the idea of, of getting course, back with you. with you. And it really depends upon how you handle yourself, what you do, and what you don't do that's going to give you another chance of getting them back. You listen to friends and family, they're going to give you a lot of bad advice. They really are. Not that they don't mean well, they do. Absolutely, they do mean well. Yeah. But they don't know breakups. And a lot of people want to just cheer you up. You know, because they don't want to see you sad. They don't want to see you upset. They, sh they just say, just get over it, which is no help at all. If you could, no. you would. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. And he was no good for you, whatever. But that's your decision and no one else's. Absolutely. Yeah. So... Be comforted in knowing that your ex is going to keep thinking about you. We had a situation in this email right. where eight months later they came back. I told you about the guy from four years ago. The other guy recently who thought he was convinced it was done, even though it was not long ago, he was right. absolutely 1,000% sure it was done and over. Right. But I know better and you know better. And I know better. All yeah, right. It may not be. So... If you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, AskCraig.net, sign up for the coaching that works best for you. I do email coaching, Skype coaching. If you got to get with me right away, I do offer emergency Skype coaching. Margaret is now available for coaching too. Yes, Winnie the Pooh or whatever you would like. <laughs> but that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. Hi, I'm Coach Margaret a relationship coach and a psychotherapist with 35 years experience. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. If you would like professional help with your situation, please contact us at askcraig.net.